Hey guys, this is a segment from the Slump Buster podcast. You can find the full episode on any of the various podcast platforms, or of course, subscribe to us on YouTube for more of our content. Other than that, guys, sit down, bust the slump, and enjoy. The Big Ten is officially throwing their hat into the ring for college football teams that will be competing, going back to their original decision to suspend the football season temporarily. How are you feeling about that decision, Fago? Are you happy? Are you okay with it? Are you a little worried overall? Overall, I think that it's going to be like a big mistake, to be honest, because like right now, we still haven't got the COVID-19 contained just yet. And people are still testing positive, left and right. And so now you bring in Big Ten football right back in the midst of going on to another uh, second phase of the COVID-19 because they said we got two different phases. We haven't got past the first phase yet. And we're going into, you know, fall slash winter time where it's supposed to be more severe. So it's supposed to be another second strand. Dr. Fauci had actually stated that not too long ago. But as far as being a sports fan, I like the idea, but I personally think that they're going to actually have fans there and that's going to cause a lot of uncertainty because it's like they want fans there, of course. That's how they get their revenue. But also at the same time, how can we, you know, contain this virus if fans is going to be in them stands? No, I, that's a reasonable concern. And coming from someone that was literally at a college football game this past weekend as UT returned, Big 12 play is back as well. I can say at least being in that stadium, I felt the social distancing was actually really well done by the fans as far as the regulations that we know of to this point. I was at least three to four bleachers away from the nearest fan in attendance. My roommate and I, we went and sure enough, it was fine while we we're in the stands. And then when you talk about the athletes, of course, they're separated from everyone on the field. And from my understanding of a lot of the protocols, these guys are getting rapid testing. So pretty much they'll get their results that same day. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're telling me that they're getting their results that same day and we're seeing negative tests, then I have a hard time making the case for them not to be able to do it. My only concern is, again, like you mentioned, outliers, fans in attendance, potentially bringing it into the stadium. But my only thing on that one is just like, if they're not getting close to the athletes, is it really that much of a concern based off um, how the virus has been known to spread? Mm -hmm. I agree with you, you know, but it's crazy because you see everybody with social distancing at the Chiefs game, but somehow somebody had tested positive. And it's like, how does that even happen? And so basically the people that was around them, they have to actually quarantine for two weeks now. That just came out today. Yeah, I'm sure there's going to be positive tests. I understand that that's going to happen. I think when we look at the other sports examples that we have to this point, I think we've come too far to do an NBA bubble. Um, and then yep. when it comes mm -hmm. to MLB, so MLB did have that rough week where it seemed like, oh boy, here we go. The Marlins tested positive, the Cardinals tested positive. But after that point, it seemed like we were relatively good. There was a situation for my San Francisco Giants where we had a player test positive, had to postpone a couple more games. But it seems as though they know like you mentioned, they make their money here with the fans in attendance. They make their money by having games. So they're going to equally put as much amount of money as it takes to test every athlete and ensure that the season goes on unfazed. Now let's talk about just the playing aspect of the Big Ten being back. Obviously, you have a couple of the two premier franchises, premier schools in college football. When you talk about Ohio State and Michigan, you have outliers like Wisconsin, Minnesota, a lot of teams that can compete for that national championship. Now, being that they won't start until mid-October, do you think these teams will either have an advantage or a disadvantage against their SEC, Big 12, ACC counterparts? I say it's a little bit disadvantaged because they haven't really played together just like that. Whereas the SEC already been playing, of course, they already got their chemistry going. But at the end of the day, as a player, you just have to be focused as well as, you know, be prepared. So at the end of the day, I will say it's a disadvantage just because they didn't really have chemistry. I'm going to just say a disadvantage right now. I'm happy for these athletes. Justin Fields, you know, was leading hard on the we want to play movement. So I'm happy that he finally gets his opportunity to play. Whether this is going to be his opportunity to potentially jump Trevor Lawrence, pretty sure we're all in unison agreement that Trevor Lawrence will be that undisputed number one. But a lot can happen, certainly, especially with these games now game played. What about the Pac-12, the last of that Power Five? Do you think we'll potentially hear some news from them about them wanting to get started? Obviously, I know you have a lot of schools in California, which California is a little bit more restricted now at this time. Um, a lot of, in general, the Pacific Northwest, from my understanding, too, is a little bit more on lockdown than um, the rest of the country. 
Right now, we're just trying to survive the smog right now, <laughs> to be honest. So we're not even really worried about any football because it's kind of hard to breathe out here. Because I don't know if you heard, like I reside in Seattle. Um, we have so much smog out here where, you know, they're already telling people that it's a safety protocol just to stay in the house right now. And it's so hard to breathe outside. Maybe in like the next three weeks, um, that will probably come into play talking about, hey, let's get, you know, football back going, up and going. But we're just trying to, to be safe and trying to somehow to survive the smog. I understand that. I mean, obviously, the Seattle Mariners and the San Francisco Giants had to postpone a game a couple of days ago yep. because mm-hmm. of that. The Niners were talking about moving one of their games because of the smoke issues going on as well. Do you think, though, with that said, it is a good or bad look for the conference if they decided to not have college football at all, given that the Pac-12's relevance in college football has really been dwindling over the years? Obviously, USC tends to lead the charge when it comes to how people generally think of the Pac-12 conference. Of course, Washington's always been competitive they might be less so now that Chris Peterman's not necessarily there what do you think about the Pac-12 moving forward whether or not they decide to start up again or whether they don't like right now and this is just my personal opinion I love sports and we are in sports media but also at the same time you have to worry about people's safeties like we again as I told you off the air we've been stuck on phase two for a very long time we have to get this kind of contained. Like all sports, I understand that, you know, people want their football back and different things of that nature. But at the, at the same time, I'm trying to travel a little bit more. We can't travel if there's fans and football when there's a virus still out there that's still killing people. No, that's true. And it's a unique year. I think a lot of adjustments have been had to be made, a lot of concessions. We've had to relegate 100 plus MLB games. We've had to lose out on traditional start times. I think people are starting to try and find normalcy at this point. But you, like you mentioned, there's a lot of challenges each and every day that we just keep getting presented. If it's not COVID-19, it's just fires everywhere. Just the whole world's on fire. <laughs> you know, it, it just is what it is. Yeah, from protesting to smog to fire uh, tornadoes. And it seems like the world's about to end. You know, that is why I always appreciate and look forward to just having sports on TV. You know, just that ability to escape. 